All right, we're live. This is Cosmo, and this is Cosmo's Roadmap to Success. Hey, buddy. Uh, he is a little bit tired right now because we've been using a muscle that he doesn't use very much, his brain. And so uh, this is basically a summary of the things that we covered in this session. Uh, by the way, what is this called again? Hathoria. Hathoria. It's uh, one of the plants that you can have that's not toxic to dogs. I think it's a pretty cool looking plant. I'm thinking about getting one myself. All right, so the first thing we talked about was exercise. His guardians do a really good job of exercising. 95% of my clients ask, how much exercise does your dog get? And they say exactly the same two word answer, not enough. And so the guardians here are walking him multiple times a day. Uh, so I think exercise, and he's a pretty chill dog, so I think the exercise is fine. But remember, you can use the exercise before you're gonna uh, practice the stay, especially when you first start leaving the, the, uh, the uh, visual, setting him up for success for that. Now, um, I'd also recommend you guys find one or two places that I would talk to Healthy Spot. WAGS is pretty close to you guys. There's a couple other places around town, but you wanna find a place where it's not too, they don't, se and they separate them, so they're not big dogs with little dogs, and that they do a temperament test. If they don't do a temperament test, then you could have a bad experience. So we wanna make sure while we're teaching a dog to like using a long-term confinement area or working with separation anxiety, we won't, don't want them to practice being alone because what they're gonna practice doing is whining and whimpering. So we need a safe place where we put them because right now you're kind of holding your guardians a little bit hostage and she's making a lot of great sacrifices for you, but she's gotta live her life too. And so if we find a place where we can park him, if we do have to uh, go to a work meeting or somewhere where we can't take him, or we park him where he's distracted, he's having a good time, sounds like he needs a little bit of uh, socialization practice anyways. So just make sure they're smaller dogs and they're supervised. Um, I, I usually look for places that you can actually watch on a security camera yourself. People know they're being watched that typically are going to behave a little bit more responsibly. Uh, kisses. Uh, that's passive training. You want to call it kisses or whatever you want to say. I actually say kisses mean licks me except for love means lick me right here. So it's very specific. So uh, probably should have said the other way around, but that's fine. So uh, we want to limit leaving him alone as much as we possibly can until we've gotten to the point where we can stay for dura uh, dis duration and distance and we're starting to have him practice being alone outside of our line of sight. So I'm not going to talk about the separation anxiety because that's going to be in the video above this one. Uh, but the other stuff that we talked about was uh, we talked about rules. Now he doesn't try to get up on the furniture. I think he probably wasn't allowed to do that on a previous home. And the guardians uh, were talking about having him up on the furniture to watch TV. You can get there, but I wait until the separation anxiety problems are gone before you start doing it. At that point, I would only allow him on the furniture with an invitation from you. Mm -hmm. And that's a one-time pass for good behavior. So if you invite him up and then he starts barking, he would have to he would lose that privilege. Or if you invite him up to uh, watch the TV, he goes against drink water, he would need another invite to get back up on your furniture after that. Uh, okay, other rules, make sure that you're eating before you feed him. Um, I would definitely recommend a snuffle mat, an omega treat ball. Um, they have a lot of puzzles where they have to like knock, knock over things or do a slider in order they can uh, actually access their food. Having him work for his food is a great way to boost his self-esteem and confidence. I usually like using Kongs more for uh, kind of a longer distracting sort of thing. I like using peanut butter um, and eventually you can freeze the peanut butter. Yes, are you, gonna, are you getting ants in your pants? You wanna shift this way? You're such a cutie, how about if we go like this? That probably looks cuter on camera. <laughs> um, all right, so, um, uh, and getting him, uh, the other thing I forgot to ask is how many toys does he have? Usually people clean up before I get here. Um, about, uh, three basket. or four. Uh, okay, so I asked one client, I'm like, how many toys does your dog have? I'm like, oh, so many. I'm like, can you tell me how many? I'm like, like, at least nine. I always say a dog should have at least 20 toys uh -huh. accessible. I and my dogs have about 30 or 40, and I usually have a box in the closet. And what I do is I take this one out, Angry Bird, is that what this is? Or no, it's, an, it's a monster. Monsters so, Inc. Yeah. yeah, Monsters Inc. So I take this one out, and I go put it in the front of the box. Then I grab the toy from the back of the box, and I put that one in rotation. Mm. And so every day a toy goes away, and another one comes back in. So it keeps them kind of fresher, um, and it also help uh, make it more interesting and appealing for him. Uh, you want a variety of toys now. He's a kind of a, a smaller dog, so you probably can use more plushies than with larger dogs where you need more uh, tougher things. But when dogs are stressed, they like to chew. Hmm. So I'd like you to get him like an antler, a couple nyla bones. Nyla bones uh, should be rigid. There should be no flexibility to them. Uh, and they come in a whole bunch of shapes. A lot of people get the only the cart skeleton cartoon looking bone. I have one that's a, like a round like a donut. I have one that's a letter Y. Uh, there's all sorts of different shapes. They come in different flavors. Um, so I'd get a couple of those, and I wouldn't give them to him all at once. I would give him one at a time, and he should find it in his kennel. So again, every time I go in this kennel, man, mm. great things happen. Mm. Um, all right, and also leave treats in the kennel. When he goes out and he goes in the other room, quietly sneak a treat in there. 
Mm. And uh, you're going to use a VRAM pet robot, and we'll talk about that in a sec. But um, in the meantime, just well, until the VRAM gets here on Thursday, so you have two days, just, and he's just like, man, every time I come here, there's a treat. So at first, we'll talk about it now. So at first, we, we throw one in there, or uh, we leave one in there to entice him to go there. But now that he's doing, starting to do this, when he goes in there, we would grab a treat and then drop it through the deal. Or if the VRAM is in there, he goes in there, we press the button and deliver the treat. Um, now the VRAM is a uh, pet robot, it zooms around the room, uh, just spreads, it dispenses treats. You can set it up with a program for how many treats or how active you want it to be. But it's a nice way for him to have a companion that will also help with his separation anxiety. Um, it's, it's stimulating for him. Uh, okay, so other rules, um, uh, make sure that the guardians are eating something before they feed him. All you have to do is eat something, a chip or cracker in five or more bites, then give him permission to eat. As soon as he d disengages from his food, whether it's one of the treat toys or in his bowl or whatever it is, pick up the toy and take it out or empty the toy if you can. If it's in his bowl, pick up the bowl, dump it empty, but it's important to put the empty bowl back down so he recognizes it's empty, it's empty, it's empty. I was gonna say like for a dog uh, eating, it's kinda like driving on the 405. When there's nobody, no traffic, you go as fast as your car can go because it's only gonna last for a mile. So when they find food, they fill up as much as they can because they might not have a successful hunt the next day. So I would recommend uh, the guardian goes uh, feed him twice a day. She can go to three if you want, uh, but try to feed him on a regular schedule. That can be comforting. He's young enough where he doesn't need that as much, but it helps with potty training and a lot of other issues. Um, when you're eating, he should not be allowed within seven feet of you. So I would say like, for example, if you guys ever eat here at the couch, he should not be allowed on the black carpet while you're eating. When we're at the table, uh, again, I would kind of put painter's tape down or wherever the lines are and just enforce those consistently. Same thing with the kitchen. Uh, it shouldn't be allowed in the kitchen when we're cooking. Now, the way that I enforce this is, uh, and I kind of was talking about this throughout the session, is I try to create scenarios where we can help the dog practice what we want. When we're eating or we're cooking, we're distracted. We're thinking about cooking and the ingredients and stirring them. So what I do instead is, uh, do you guys have a problem with bacon? No, I love bacon. Okay. Yeah. So basically, go in the kitchen, and so once you go past the threshold, you turn to face him. And you're going to use those escalating consequences that I went over. If you forget what those are, message me. I can go over them with you or I can share a video with you. So you turn to face him and now the line is right here. So, and he's outside and you're not going to let him cross the line. If he crosses it, you, you hiss or rush towards him. Mm -hmm. And when he stops moving, you take two steps backwards, left foot, right foot, and pause. This is probably going to cause him to start to cross over the threshold. As soon as he does, you hiss and rush towards him. And you'll have to do this back and forth several times until eventually he learns as soon as I cross this line, they were correcting me. So I'll just stand on this side of the line. Once he sits, uh, once he's stationary, you take another step backwards and keep your, uh, your, uh, your chest pointed towards him. And eventually, and take pretty big steps when you're moving away. Once you get to the point where you can be several feet away from where the line is, then what I do is I microwave some bacon and I keep my hips pointed towards him when I walk to where to put the microwave in or the skillet or whatever we're doing. Now, I put that on the counter and he's, and he's gonna come in and he's like, man, it sure looks like she's, and she sure smells like she's cooking. And then when, you, when that's happening, you're pre-cooking. You're doing your prep work. So you're basically uh, grabbing the stuff out of the kitchen, uh, out of the cupboard, out of the, uh, the fridge. You're banging some pots and pans around. It looks like you're cooking. It smells like you're cooking, but you're watching him. And watch him out of the corner of your eye like you would be if you're at the beach and you don't want this character to know that you're checking out another dude. So you want to be very sly about it so he doesn't realize that you're watching. But as soon as he crossed that threshold, you rush it. Okay, buddy, I got you. I'm listening. Uh, as soon as he does it across that threshold, you march, rush towards him. Now, if, he, if you're way in the kitchen and you start rushing him and you take three steps and he, viol and he gets outside the boundary, you stop there. You always go all the way up to the boundary if he's still there. But as soon as he crosses and gets outside the boundary, then we stop reacting. So by practicing uh, simulated cooking, now it's just like, man, just polka dot shirt guy comes and now they see everything. Mm. And so now, once he sits or does what he just did and lays down outside the boundary, then you put your bacon away and you start your actual cooking. He doesn't know the difference, but we help him warm up by doing a practice. Mm. Um, you can do the same thing for dinner. So um, uh, sit in your normal places, enforce the boundary first, and then microwave some roast beef. Some sort of meat product that's going to smell. Put it on your plates and start cutting it up in little pieces, but watch him out of the corner. As soon as he crosses the threshold, you, you hiss and march towards him. So eventually we teach him that just when we're eating, you're not allowed to be in there. The rest of the time you can go under the table, but when mm -hmm. we're eating, not allowed to be there. When they have a snack here, not allowed to be in the black deal. Um, and so that help, that will also help with separation anxiety. I can see them, they're five feet away, but I can't cross the invisible boundary. And I'm the one stopping myself from crossing the boundary. You mm -hmm. got ants in your pants, huh? Let's give you a little bit of crack there. 
I bet you if I give you some crack, you'll be happy. To be here. It's like, whoa, leave that bucket here. All right. So, um, all right. So, um, again, we need him to practice developing some self-restraint, self-control, and that's a great way to do that. Um, let me see. Uh, other rules, go to the door. Clo Before you do this exercise, close your screen door. Have your inside door closed. Go to the door and command him to sit one time. If he doesn't sit within three seconds, walk away and sit down and ask your A assistant for one minute timer. After one minute, go back there and command him again only once. You tell him once and he has three seconds to fly. If he doesn't comply, if you can't be bothered to sit, buddy, I can't be bothered to open that door. Mm. And so if he doesn't, then you walk away for two minutes next time, then four minutes, and then eight minutes. Anytime you walk away, make sure he's seated and double the length of time. But eventually when you say, when he says, you say sit and he sits, fly the door open immediately. Now you have a screen door open, so it's preventing it from going out. Now, if you want, you can go to dogdownproblems.com and click on where it says dog training tips. Uh, you can type in invisible, uh, well, let me see, wait at door. Uh, and I've done videos where I teach people just because the door's open doesn't mean you have permission to go out and it's one of the things you want to work on. We didn't get a chance to go through it here, but that video is pretty uh, descriptive. Also, uh, for the kitchen boundaries, you can type kitchen or you can type in invisible and I show people how to uh, show the dog to a, uh, respect an invisible line. So again, these are things where he can cross the threshold. He doesn't do it without your permission or your invitation and that helps him develop some self-control as well as respect for you as authority figures and develop his self-restraint muscles. Uh, okay, so those are examples of rules. We also went over petting with a purpose and passive training. Petting with a purpose is if he comes up and nudges you or barks at you or paws at you and you pet him, you're telling him you're the boss because leaders tell, followers ask. So next time he gives you an order, give him a counter order. Tell him to sit or to lie down. If he's already sitting here, he has him sit here or lay down. And if he does, pet him under his chin and say the word sit and only the word sit and pet him once to an infinity number of times, as much as you'd like. You'd like but at least one pet. And, um, and if he doesn't pet, doesn't sit, then just watch, turn watch TV on, and wait a, a couple, you know, a period of time. Uh, if he whines and protests the whole time, don't even look at it. If you go, oh, it's working. Yeah, I heard that too. So the idea is he understands the only way that I'm gonna get this is by doing what they want. Uh, and the whining and whimpering doesn't achieve anything. So once he, once he kind of stops that, if you want to pet him again, tell him to sit. If he doesn't, then you ignore him. But if he does, you pet him under the chin, say the word sit, and only the word sit, and pet him as much or as little. Uh, remember to use the watchword paycheck. If you suspect someone's petting without a purpose, we say paycheck. Even if I did it right, I would stop petting, say Cosmo, sit. When he sits, I pet him under the chin, say sit. Actually, I asked him to sit when you flush the toilet. He stood up and I came out and I continued petting, and David said it's allowed. And David, it is allowed. But it's just a gentle reminder because you won't forget, you'll forget how often you pet without a purpose. Mm. And even if you want to pet him, tell him to sit and earn it. Uh, it'll boost his self-esteem, it'll increase his respect for his authority figure, it helps him practice a little self-restraint and discipline, and it helps him practice sitting. Uh, and also to lay down. Uh, for passive training, um, he really doesn't know how to lay down on command, so I, rec I like using fun command words. Make sure, make sure you make that vocabulary list and you don't have to change all your words. I would like sit and come to be pretty, because you know, if he gets out, I want him to come to whoever calls him. Mm. Uh, but like if I want my dog to lay down, I say crash. Some of my clients say chill. Um, so every time that he lays down on his own accord, make sure you pet him and say chill or crash, or whatever word is you guys decide. Every time he goes in there, uh, park it. Mm -hmm. uh, every time he goes, come up with a funny name for your, your long-term confinement area. Call it like, you know, Fiji or Jamaica or you know Sicily or something that's a place you've always wanted to go. Something that's going to make people smile and laugh. Um, and if you want to change it, let's say we want to change. Let's say that he could lie down on command if we say lie down, and I want to change it. What I would say is lie down. When he lies down, I would give him the treat, and then I would say chill. Mm. So that's how you transition from one to the other. Mm. So keep a list of vocabulary terms. And what I usually say is vocabulary. If you're like come here, is like vocabulary? Oh, thank you. Come. We use a bunch of variations of the word and it makes it harder for him to listen. We just use one command word, it's much easier for him to remember those words and perform better. And again, you probably do you need to teach him how to drink water on command? No. But teaching him how to drink water on command gives you another thing that you can redirect him to do. So name all of your individual toys. Monster. Oh. Uh -oh. I was like, okay. is, there, is it going off on its own? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's crazy, isn't it? Yes. Um, so name all the individual toys. You know, call this Ropey. And, you know, can you give him a couple of funny names. But that way, if he brings you Ropey, pet him and say Ropey mm. or whatever the name is. And after a while, then you can tell him if he comes up and he's boisterous, go give me the ball. We'll play fetch. 
or whatever it is, you have a richer, better communication with him if we label these things. Mark them is what we call it. Um, when, you're, when he's out, uh, outside, when he's peeing or pooping, come up with a funny word. So my clients say splat or plop or deposit is the, uh, I use business is the word I use. So you might want to change the word. Um, and so, sometimes dogs have a negative association with what they were taught before. So when he's outside doing his business, as soon as he starts to pee or poop, say business mm -hmm. in a normal tone of voice. When he gets done, crouch down, give him a treat, and say business again. Remember, always the treat goes in the mouth first, mm -hmm. here's the command word after. Um, try to avoid saying good dog, say just the command word, and also there's a difference between sit and sit. Now, high-pitched voice like that is more attractive to dogs, but most people, they, they do hear inflection, so that makes multiple command words, and most people don't feel comfortable doing it. There's nothing wrong with baby talking to your dog, you should just always baby talk to your dog. I just find conversational tone is much more, mm -hmm. uh, much more helpful. Now, since he is a door dasher, if he ever does get away from you, um, dogs like to chase and be chased. And I have a puppy class instructor that once chased his family dog into traffic and got hit by a car because he was afraid of it getting hit by a car. So what you want to do is if he does get away from you is you want to make a really high-pitched voice like this, like, puppy! And when he looks at you, run away from him or drop to the ground like you're dead. Okay. He'll come to you. But if you chase him, you'll chase him you know, across Lincoln or mm. in Maine or wherever you want, and that's not what we want to do. But that passive training, that's where that comes in handy. So every time he comes to you on his own, pet him and say, come I know you're getting, you're getting a little ants in your hands. We're almost done, I promise. Um, so a lot of times when we give our dog a command word, it's the end of fun. Hmm. I'm in the yard yelling at the squirrel. You are worried the neighbor's going to hear me, so he asked me to come. I listen to you, and you, I come in, and you close the door, and I can't yell at the squirrel anymore. Listening to you represents the end of fun. Well, now all we do is every time he comes to us, we put him and say, come. Hmm. So 99% sit. So passive training is just waiting for him to organically offer you that behavior, and then you take the baggage out of it. By not coming, that I have something you want me. Well, we're not doing that now. Just every time you come to me, I pet you and reward you. That motivates him to want to do those things. Mm -hmm. um, I also went over a focus exercise. If I don't have it linked on this write up in the text somewhere, message me and I'll add it in. Uh, but practice that focus exercise. Remember, uh, in the house every day, up, and you can go to doggoneproblems.com and uh, click on dog training tips and search for focus. You'll be able to watch other videos if you want to start on this right away. You'll get this. I'm going to have this done tomorrow for you, uh, tomorrow or the next day. Um, and so basically, the focus exercise, once you have that established, you say focus, he snaps up and looks at you. So instead of him barking the chihuahua at the store that you were talking about, you say focus, he looks at you. Now, if he is reacting, the best thing you do is increase the distance between him and whatever he's reacting to. Sometimes you have to take him beyond line of sight. Once he's settled down, am I too testing if he's settled? Will he take a treat and will he sit? He won't do those two things. He's still too close or it's still too worked up. So go in the ladies' room or wherever you have to. And wait for him to settle down and then start practicing that focus exercise and, and that'll stop the production of cortisol and start put, releasing those pleasure endorphins and help him feel better about it. Um, all right, I'm trying to think, is there anything else that uh, went over that you want me to kind of highlight here? No mm -hmm. pressure, you can always call or text me anytime you have questions. I can't think of anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. that's great. It's yeah. like I've done this before. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so now uh, please program the number I called you in my uh, my cell phone, I'll talk to you about this off camera, but please text me. If I don't hear from you, I assume everything's going great. And so, yes. You gonna give me kisses? Kisses, there we go. Mm -hmm. uh, and remember, he was a little bit fearful of the camera. So just uh, uh, hold up your camera and don't, don't take a picture, don't make it really close. Just hold it up and then take it away and give him the treat. Hold it up, do that about five times in a row. Then you can gradually make the camera a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer. Yes, I can feel, I know you're trying to get down. He's mouthing, he's just like, I, this mm -hmm. is long enough. All right, well, this cutie pie is Cosmo, and this is Cosmo's Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it.